Lord Jesus Christ. From the Gospel, I, I'm going to focus on, this is the Gospel of uh, John, uh, chapter 17, verse 1 to 11. But I'm going to focus on the first few verses. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. Give glory to your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. There's a beautiful uh, spiritual practice when we pray, and it is to, when we read Scripture, to insert ourselves in the reading. So that when it speaks of Jesus Christ or, or of a third person, that we put ourselves in it so that it becomes God speaking to me, I to God, God to me, and it makes it a little bit more personal. So taking that phrase, the Father, Father, the hour has come, give glory to your Son so that your Son may glorify you. We can really insert ourselves in Christ Jesus as beloved children of the Father. So we could say, Father, the hour has come. Give glory to your Son. Give glory to your children. Give glory to your sons and daughters. Sons and daughters in Christ Jesus. So, Father, give glory to your children. So that what? So that your children may glorify you. Give glory to your children so that your children may glorify you. And we do this in the mystery of Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, the Son of God, we in Christ are beloved children of the Father. So just taking on those words, Father, glorify me, glorify you, glorify us, so that we may glorify you, so that you may glorify him, that I may glorify God. There's a beautiful understanding here that, that we can ask God to glorify himself in us because as he glories us, then we give glory to God. I, you know, I always struggle with this, um, uh, this being glorified by the Father. Um, there's, there's a, a uh, a hidden fear within me that if the Father glorifies Himself in me, that that it may get up in my head, that I may start thinking of myself more than what really I am. Um, and often I, I shy away from moments of being glorified uh, in the Father because I'm afraid that in being glorified, it may be feeding my ego, uh, my narcissistic tendencies, my desire to be praised and loved by all. But if you understand this prayer, Father, glorify your Son so that your Son may glorify you, then we shouldn't be afraid when the Father glorifies us as long as we take that glory and in turn make it to glorify God. So there's a beautiful expression, you know, I hear it said often, and I do also say it often, that, you know, when someone it's, uh, I use it as a way to keep me grounded. When someone says, Father, great homily, great job, great this, great that, then there, the Father is glorifying himself. He glories his son so that his son may glorify him. And in that glorifying God, I may say, praise God. So someone gives you a praise and then you in turn take that praise to give praise to God by saying, praise God. So, Father, glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. Father, work in me so that the works that you do in me may be the cause of praise and glorifying you. Father, help me uh, uh, succeed or or do well in this project, ministry, uh, uh, this idea, this something that I'm working on, so that as 
you give glory to your son, I may give glory and praise to you who is doing all this work uh, through me, in me. So, Father, glorify your son, glorify your children, glorify your sons and daughters so that we may give glory to you. Um, lately, I've, I've uh, been reviewing my life in the spirit of um, the next two days. In two days, May the 20th, I'll be celebrating 15 years of priesthood. Uh, so, uh, this... Uh, celebrations coming up uh, of my 15th anniversary uh, as priest has really caused me to look back at my 15 years of priesthood and and and, and to see how the Lord has been uh, has been working in my life, how He has glorified Christ Jesus in me as His beloved Son, so that I in turn in Christ Jesus may give glory to the Father. And there's many events where, where I could see the hand of God at work. That I could see how God glorified His Son in Christ Jesus. That I may then in turn glorify the Father. Um, from I remember from the struggles of having to uh, adjust and migrating from Puerto Rico to Florida and having to learn a new language, having to adjust into a new culture struggling in high school, struggling in, in college, feeling uh, the sense of uh, not knowing what to do with my life. And when I surrender to the Father, Father, just show me what to do. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. How God then glorify His Son in Christ Jesus by calling me to be a priest and in living out priesthood, how I am giving glory to the Father. I remember uh, when I entered the seminary, how much I struggled with the academic world. Uh, one, because I was still struggling with the language, the English language. Uh, I recall uh, the first paper that I wrote, uh, and my professor read the paper, and he said to me, say, Carlos, this paper is an F. Out of mercy, I'm going to give you a C, but we got work to do. Uh, and that same priest worked very closely with me and helped me, taught me really how to read, how to write, how to write papers. Uh, and then we went from uh, three years that I was under his direction, under his formation, learning how to read and write in English and, and in the end, finishing my uh, bachelor's of philosophy, writing a thesis that was 80 pages long from not being able to write to now writing 80, 80 pages uh, of a thesis. There, the Father glorify His Son, so that His Son may glorify me, so that I could speak of others. And yes, it can be done by the grace and the glorifying of God in us. I remember finishing my uh, my uh, my minor seminary, going from the minor seminary to the major seminary, from from the bachelor's to the master's. And then a, a, a series of difficulties happened in the seminary, and, and I got kicked out. I, I did not get recommended to go into the major seminary. And in that struggle, praying to the Father, Father, glorify your Son in Christ Jesus, so that your Son may glorify you. And after a very intense summer, with intensive psychological formation, surveys, questions, exams, and eventually uh, I was once again accepted to the seminary under a period of probation. The Father glorified me so that I could glorify the Father in a way as to say, look, it is possible. By the glory of God, things that are impossible can be possible. I remember those two years of probation in the major seminary and not seeing the day when I was going to be uh, able to move on from probation to a, a, a regular status in the seminary. And beginning to see seminarians that were in a similar uh, situation like me in probation being kicked out of the seminary and beginning to wonder, am I going to be the next one to be kicked out of the seminary? And I became mighty close to it. But then the Father glorified His Son, His Son in Christ Jesus, so that I may glorify the Father. I recall uh, 
towards my uh, end of my seminary years uh, in a major seminary. Um, after finally being moved from probation to a regular status, really struggling with 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 a sense of uh, of am I am I really worthy to be a priest? Am I really ready uh, after being so much uh, evaluated and and criticized and judged and challenged to grow? I began to wonder: Is there anything worthy in me to be? Uh, to be called into the ministry of priesthood? Um, is there anything in me uh, that merits uh, um, serving the Lord under their uh, call to priesthood? Um, and then I remember going on my pastoral year uh, and then my that one year of internship where I was sent to uh, Plant City, St. Clements in Plant City for one year and feeling how uh, my relationship with the people of Plant City really began to build me up build my esteem and, and seeing how the people were really seeing uh, good uh, attributes uh, and, and, and seeing merits within me that they appreciated, that it was serving them, that it was helping them. I could feel how God was glorifying His Son in Christ Jesus so that in Christ Jesus I may glorify the Father. I remember then being ordained a priest and in the beautiful ceremonies, which recently, as I was participating in the uh, Holy Orders of uh, now Father Easy, who Israel Hernandez, who was just ordained uh, this last weekend, to reliving those moments where the Father was glorifying me in Christ Jesus for the purpose that I, in being glorified, I can give, then give glory to the Father. And now that I'm uh, about to celebrate the 15 years of priesthood, and I've been in, in eight different parishes, and, and I've seen how God has glorified His Son in Christ Jesus, so that in glorifying the Son, I can give glory to the Father, to the ministry of priesthood, or the, the parishes that I was able to help and serve, and some of them were parishes that were in great trouble. Uh, and the glory of the Father really working through his son to glorify himself in the ministry of priesthood. So I, I, I share all this I, and I, I invite you to consider how has God been glorifying himself in you, with you, through you? Ask the Father, Father, glorify yourself in me that I may glorify you. Perhaps there's a situation in your life in which you're struggling. And I like the phrase that just before it says, give glory to your son so that your son may glorify. It says, Father, the hour has come. And by the language of the hour has come, it implies that something difficult is about to come. The hour of our Lord Jesus Christ is his passion and death. Perhaps you're going through some struggles and the hour has come for you. Now, in Christ Jesus, make this your prayer. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. That in the midst of the hour which has come for you, in the struggle and the difficulties that you're going through, through those difficulties, ask, because now is the moment. It is the hour for the Father to glorify Himself in with through you, especially when you're having struggles where you find yourself that you you feel like you're not able to, that you're impotent, where you're you're powerless, where the best of your attempts, the best of your abilities and faculties and 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 talents are not enough to be able to uh, survive or uh, or uh, survive that this hour, then in the hour. Father, the hour has come. It's only possible if you glorify yourself in me. Glorify your son, your daughter, your child, your children, so that they may glorify you. So there is nothing wrong with asking the Father to glorify me, glorify you, glorify us, as long as asking for his 
glorification is only so that we can glorify him. Now, the best example of how to do this is we have our Blessed Mother. You could almost hear echoes of it uh, throughout Scripture. Mary saying, uh, the hour has come and the many struggles that she endured. And Mary saying, Father, in Christ Jesus, glorify me, your daughter, that I may glorify you, our Heavenly Father. The whole Magnifica is a song of Mary, recognizing that the Father has glorified her and she glorifying the Father. Notice the beautiful dance that happened in the Magnifica. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. In other words, my soul glorifies the Father. My soul magnifies the Father. My soul magnifies the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices. My spirit is more than glad to give praise and honor to glorify your name, Father. For you've looked with favor on my lowliness. You've looked with favor on on the hour of my struggle, the hour of my passion, the hour of my death, my hour of giving of myself beyond my capacity, asking for your power, your glory. You've looked upon my lowliness and then in my lowliness, you've glorified me. And from this day, all generations who call me blessed. Why? Because the Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. I'm glorified so that I can give glory to the Father. So on this day in which we renew our covenant, uh, to ask in the spirit of renewing our covenant, that we may be glorified. Father, glorify us. Glorify me, your son, your daughter, your children in Christ Jesus, that we, in being glorified by you through the struggles through the difficulties that we endure, that as we thrive in the midst of our struggles, we may give glory to you. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. Now let us begin our prayers. What do we pray for? I pray that as we renew our covenant of love, our relationship with our Blessed Mother, we may be taken deeper into the mystery of the Father's glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling, those who have come to the acknowledgement that their hour has come, that you give them consolation, that you give them strength, that you give them power, that you give them your glory and glorify them so that they in turn, by bearing witness to your power in their struggles and in their life, they may give glory to you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a priest, uh, for Father Israel Hernandez, uh, for all those priests who have been, uh, were recently been ordained into the priesthood, uh, for all priests, that they truly may grow in holiness, by allowing themselves, uh, by really making this their prayer, Father, glorify your Son in Christ Jesus, so that in Christ Jesus, your sons may glorify you. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick, those who are dying, those who have asked of our prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We invite you to take this moment of silence uh, so that you to present whatever pr- uh, prayers you may be inspired to ask at this moment. Heavenly Father, listen to our prayers. Glorify your children that your children may glorify you. For we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 